Here we're looking at numbers 11 through 20 on the sample final exam. So number 11, we've got a variation problem. Suppose that y varies directly with x. So y varies directly with x. Remember, this is direct. If it were inversely, it would be k over x. All right. So this one is kx. And we're given that when y equals 10, or y equals 10, when x equals 25. So if I divide both sides by 25, I get k equals 2 fifths. So that means y equals 2 fifths x, right? kx. We want to find y when x equals 6. So y equals 2 fifths times 6, which is y equals 12 fifths. Okay, choose the end behavior. <clears throat> All right, so two things to remember. Even rises on both sides. Odd falls, falls to the right. So it rises to the left, falls to the right, right? No, I had it right the first time. <laughs> All right, the only thing that changes is if we change the sign. So if it's negative, then all of a sudden we're talking about down and down or up and down. So this one is odd positive. So odd positive means that we are rising to the right, rising to the right, falling to the left. Here we have four, so it's even but it's negative, even, negative, down, down, false, false. Here we have, we've got x to the first, and we've got an x squared, which means it's odd, right? 2 plus 1 equals 3. We add up all of the exponents. So 1 plus 2 is 3, odd, negative, odd, negative. It means it's going to rise left fall right. Rise left, fall right. Okay. Here we want to graph all the vertical and horizontal asymptotes of this function. So, vertical asymptotes. The first thing we've got to do is we've got to factor. So we're going to factor this as 3 times x squared plus 3x minus 4 over negative x squared plus 3x plus 2. And the reason I did that is because I want that minus sign out front, so I have this positive. So now I can see that this will factor as 3 times x plus 4 minus 1. And here we'll have negative 1 times x plus 2, x plus 1. So we see that nothing cancels out. Okay, but we do see that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 1 when we set each of those things equal to 0. Now, this is going to give us uh, at negative 1 a vertical asymptote and at negative 2 a vertical asymptote. Now, to find horizontal asymptotes, we go back to the original problem, and we compare those uh, degrees. So this is second degree, this is second degree. If they have the same degree, then we only look at this. 3 divided by negative 1 is negative 3. 1, 2, 3, negative 3. y equals negative 3 is going to give me uh, my intercept. Oh, not my intercept, my asymptote, sorry. Now, what happens if the top is bigger? If the top is bigger, no asymptote. If the bottom is bigger, then the y x, the x axis, y equals zero will be the asymptote. Okay? Here we are given a graph, and we want to assume that all the asymptotes and intercepts are shown and that the graph has no holes. Alright, so our vertical asymptotes occur here, which is at x equals negative one. 
a horizontal asymptote happens in here, which is y equals 2. Our x-intercepts, anywhere it crosses the x-axis, here is the only place that's at negative 3. Our y-intercepts are anywhere it crosses the y-axis, which is there, which is at 6, negative 6. To find the domain and range, basically it's going to be everything except there where there are asymptotes here, right? So we're talking about negative infinity to that vertical asymptote at negative 1, union with negative 1 to positive infinity. Same thing with the range, from negative infinity up to negative 2, union with negative 2 to positive infinity. I forgot the minus sign here. So, don't forget, you see how I caught that mistake up here, that I didn't have a minus sign because I knew that I was doing negative 2 here. All right. Number 15, write in terms of i. So I know I can rewrite this as negative 1 times 48, which means square root of negative 1 times the square root of 48, which is i square root of 48. But I'm not done. Remember, I have to find if there's any uh, anything that's, evenly divisible by 48, that is a perfect square. And I know 4 is, but remember, we need the biggest perfect square. So I, I'm going to recognize that 16 times 3 is also 48. So this gives me i times the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. And we all know the square root of 16 is 4, so 4i square root of 3. Here we're going to do some synthetic division. Remember, bring the first down. Multiply and bounce, and then add, multiply and bounce, add, multiply and bounce, add, multiply and bounce, add. So here we wind up with, since it started with x to the fourth, this becomes x to the third, x squared, x. This is the plus whatever, and then this is the remainder. The remainder goes here. So we know that this is just going to be 6x cubed plus 1x squared minus 3x plus 5, no remainder. But if there were a remainder, we would write it over the x plus 3. 17, we've got some uh, complex numbers that are being foiled, right, because we're multiplying bin uh, binomials. So negative 6 times negative 4 is positive 24. Negative 6 times positive 5i is negative 30i. 2i and negative 4 is negative 8i. And 2i and 5i is plus 10i squared. So that's 24. Negative 30 and negative 8 is negative 38i. i squared is negative 1, so this becomes minus 10. So 24 minus 10 is 14 minus 38i. All right, 18. Use the rational zeros to list all possible rational zeros. So we're talking about factors of the constant term divided by factors of the leading coefficient. So 6 is going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6. Factors of the leading coefficient are just plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. So we're going to say 1 divided by 1 is 1. 1 divided by 2 is a half. 2 divided by 1 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, but I've already got 1, so I don't have to write it. 3 divided by 1 is 3. 3 divided by 2 is 3 halves. 6 divided by 1 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3, but I already have 3, so I don't have to write it. And then I just go back in and put my plus or minuses. All right, 19, we're going to divide. Since we've got x plus 4, we can do this with synthetic division. So we're going to say, I'm going to do it both ways. I'm going to do synthetic first. So 5, 24, 12. And we change this to negative 4. Remember, c always has the opposite sign. So bring down our 5, multiply, bounce, add. Multiply, bounce, add. We get negative 4. So since we started with x is squared, that means this is the x, this is the plus, and this is the remainder. So 5x plus 4 
minus 4 over x plus 4. So now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do long division. 5x squared plus 24x plus 12x plus 4. So what times x equals 5x squared? 5x, right? 5x times x is 5x squared. 5x times 4 is 20x. So we're going to change these, and we are going to say that's going to give us 4x and bring down the 12. So what times x equals 4x? Or positive 4, so 4x plus 16. We're going to change those signs. Those cancels out. 12 minus 16 is negative 4. So we have minus 4 over the x plus 4. Either way, we wind up with the same. That's an ugly plus sign. Either way, we wind up with the same thing. Here, <clears throat> we're given uh, a weird polynomial, and we want to find all of the zeros and their multiplicity. Okay? So, multiplicity 1, 2, 3. I could say 4 or 5. I could say as many as I wanted to, right? So, Multiplicity of 1, that means if they just have 1x, right, no exponents, that's going to give me this one, so we change the 13. This one we change to negative 8. Because remember, all we're doing is setting them equal to 0, so we have to move it to the other side. Here we've got a factor of 2, or a, a multiplicity of 2 gives us uh, 7, and 3 gives us negative 11. I don't have a 4 or 5, these are the only ones that I care about. Why? Because that took care of all of them. So if you have any questions about any of these, just shoot me a reminder or uh, make sure you come to the review.